Hey, welcome back to episode two of the Garage Attic Lift System. Let's take this thing for a test drive and put the finishing touches on it. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment on this channel. Thank you much. All right, well, I'm getting ready to put together the bottom section of the lift, and uh, this goes on the bottom of the platform. The platform is right there, and it will come down. And I'm going to uh, just come let it come down and rest on it, so that uh, I can line everything up. And then uh, I'm going to have to put some hooks through it. These hooks right over here that I'll have to bend out just a little bit. And those hooks will actually hook on those springs those six springs that are up there. So I'm going to line all that up first, take the, the two by fours off of the, the, the platform portion. So let's walk up here real quick and we'll let, the, let it down. working great. This is the switch, remote switch for the electric hoist and got everything lined up really good. And as long as you don't bounce it, like stop and start it, it stays really straight. <laughs> so, so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and line this bottom up by placing it underneath the two by fours uh, on the platform and once I've got that all lined up I'll take the two by fours off and then I can know exactly where those hooks are going to have to be so we'll go ahead and get to that all right this baseboard that I'm attaching with the springs uh, serves an important purpose in that it covers that opening at the top it will give me a seal uh, so that the weather, heat or cold, uh, will not be able to impact the garage area. And also it will have my feet on the bottom, which will be uh, able to put the legs on for the table portion of it. So what I'm doing here is I am uh, doing the middle uh, section of springs. Uh, this is uh, doing the pilot hole and then I'm uh, putting those nuts and washers on and then these uh, two two by fours that uh, basically span that area and give a little bit of tension to the springs. Once I line these up I'll lower it back down and run my uh, screws right through the top and into those two by fours. So we'll go ahead and add those six screws and that'll be fine to hold that top uh, to the two by fours. And one thing I did run into on my test with this, with the springs attached, was it flapped just a little bit whenever I would start and stop. So those springs weren't providing enough tension. So I added two more springs on each end that were a little bit stronger and that seemed to take care of the problem. I decided to go ahead and go with some guides to help uh, align things as the lift went through the opening. Okay, these guides I hope and will make things easier when it goes up so that it can just kind of self-correct so I don't have to worry about hitting the edges. So I did that on all four sides. Uh, I'm hoping I don't have to do it on the ends, but we'll see how this see how this works. We're gonna give it a test around here. Self-tapping screws there. One screws here. Uh, counter something just a little bit. So that hopefully they won't catch on anything. These are, it didn't really matter here. So see how it goes. 
And just like my oldest son Alex said when he was five, I just stuck it in my head and it worked. So before, what I was having a problem with was when I would stop or when I would start, there was not enough tension uh, on the springs that I have in there. I had a total of six. There wasn't enough tension. So I beefed up the, the spring a little bit. It's a little bit stronger spring. And I put two on each end. That seemed to take uh, that, that noise when I would stop. Right now, you can see it doesn't really have much. It was totally slapping this against this two by four or these two by fours and it was really popping and making a loud noise every time I stopped so I think that took care of it yeah nice and quiet all right so I've got uh, this this beam here and I've got all the space above it that I want to make good use of I still have room to get back into the back either through there or through there. And I have some storage over on this side that I can use. So what I'm gonna do here is I've got this nice little sharp edge that I keep worrying about. I think I'm gonna hit my head when I go down, bend down. So I think I'm gonna kinda of kill two birds with one stone and I'm gonna put a two by six, run a two by six across this way and it'll kinda of cover that up and block me from it and it'll run all the way over here that will provide support all the way out to this edge and i will attach it um, to these joists here and then back on the back side i'll put i'll string a, a two by four across here and across the back side there okay you got that part complete i put that two by six on the front and then added in a couple two by fours and these leftover birch plywood pieces to create this shelf so that's going to be a lot of good storage space right there as an extra safety measure i drilled a hole through the torsion shaft and the cable drum and inserted a clevis pin with a hitch pin to secure it as just a safety measure in case uh, it would slip on that torsion shaft. Periodically I have been testing that just to make sure that it's loose, that clevis pin is loose and that tells me that there's been no extra pressure put on it and uh, to this point it hasn't uh, tightened up at all so I know it's not uh, spinning on that. Okay, it's time to go ahead and start cleaning some of these areas up. So I'm going to start with the opening in the ceiling and I chose some quarter inch vinyl trim for that. Just screw that into place and a little bit of clean up there gives it a nice clean finish look uh, for the opening. Here I used the same paint color as I did for the ceiling so that it'd be a nice match there. And then on the lift itself I used a paint uh, color that matches the rest of the garage uh, in the build-ins or build-outs. Next I'm installing the feet for the lift and I chose to install them where the eyelet bolts from that extra springs that I added on each end are located. And, and I'm using a one inch black flange, black iron flange 
uh, for the feet bottom. I'll then use a couple of connectors with some rubber feet, uh, which you'll see here in just a second, that I'll just screw right into that to provide me with the soft landing that I want for the lift. Have I said how much I love this diamond plate aluminum? Easy to cut, easy to work with, file. You can use a utility knife on it. And I'm not even getting paid to say this, so uh, you know it's pretty good. I love using it around the garage and it's become a little bit of a theme in the garage as well. I think the only thing more satisfying than taking this plastic off is popping bubble wrap. Here I am using some epoxy glue to attach these trim pieces to this diamond plate. I guess I could have just painted the top or finished it out in a natural wood finish, but of course I had to go a little extra here and put on some laminate, uh, which actually ended up looking pretty good. This trim here really only shows whenever it's down, but I thought it added a nice look for the bar portion. This aluminum silicone was a pretty close match for filling in any cracks that were left. These are the feet for the bar legs, and uh, we're gonna add some rubber feet to the bottom of that with some epoxy to give it a nice soft landing. To add the bar legs we take the short feet off and I keep the bar legs wrapped in a flexible wire and accessible right at the top so that I can just remove those and prepare to put them on the bottom. Probably important to note is that the front legs are a little bit longer than the back legs so that I get a nice level tabletop where it lands because garages have a natural drop for watershed. And here they are attached and coming on down. Then I just unhook from the lift on each side and I have some dumbbells that I use 
I use the same wire that I used to hold the table legs together and just wrap that around and hook onto those wires so that it provides a little bit of weight so it keeps them on track on the drum. So once I have those pulled up I just drop this styrofoam painted the same color as my ceiling insert into the hole and that keeps the cold and hot air out. Overall, I'm really happy with the build so far. I, I was able to use it during the, the Christmas season for uh, bringing all of the decor down and taking it back up again. And uh, I made it a one-man job instead of uh, me handing boxes and totes and things down uh, from that ladder. And, and, uh, and so that part I'm really pleased with. It's not like I use this every day. I do use it uh, whenever I need to get things up and down and it's like I said mainly decor that we store up there uh, for the holidays uh, whether it be Thanksgiving type decor or Christmas decor uh, you know Christmas trees all of that good good stuff um, there are a few other items but that's that's for the, the most the bulk of the, the things that are up there I want to thank you once again for viewing uh, these videos uh, thank you for being a part of the channel if you subscribe if you haven't subscribed Make sure you do. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. I have some great things coming up and, and I look forward to sharing them with you. Have a great day. So, uh, this is the next big section that I've worked on for uh, the garage lift, attic lift system. And uh, what I have here is the laminated beam that I built um, using plywood and 2x6s. And you can kind of see uh, what that looks like uh, and, and how that was put together earlier.